What's up guys? A new school year is upon us. And what is that one thing you really want to prove that you can do or that you just wish would happen to ace your math class? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you 10 tips that you can use to ace your math class. And I don't care if you are in seventh grade math, I don't care if you're in differential equations, if you're in high school, if you're in college, no matter where you're at, I think all of these tips are going to be applicable to you. You might need to adjust them a little bit based on your own circumstance, but from being a teacher for 14 years, as well as a struggling math student, I came up with these tips because either they've helped me as a student or I've seen how they've helped my students inside of the classroom. All right, so let's get on to tip number one. So tip number one is talk to your teacher. Now, what do I mean talk to your teacher? I mean, talk to them, introduce yourself to them. Make sure your teacher knows who you are. Make sure your teacher knows your motivation and that you're ready to ace your class. Believe it or not, most teachers are on your side. They want you to succeed. And guess what? They are willing to do whatever they can to help you get there. But one thing that teachers want to see is they want to see you putting in the effort. I can definitely vouch this from a student as well as from a teacher that there's definitely some classes that I know I got the benefit of the doubt from my teacher and professor because I was constantly in there putting in the work and they knew I was really trying to do my best in their class. And the same thing as a teacher, I think it's very natural to want to reciprocate by helping students out when you see they're putting in all the time and effort to be successful in your class. So make sure you take advantage if they offer office hours or after school tutoring, go in there, ask questions, make sure they know who you are. And I know we can be more shy in others, sometimes in class and sometimes outside, but make sure at the very least you're keeping an open communication line with your teacher. Tip number two is work with other people. Find some people, someone to help you within the class. Math is not designed to be alone. I know sometimes we sit in rows and we do our math work all by ourselves, but that does not mean at home that you have to be studying by yourself or doing your homework by yourself. Find a group of people that you can study with. Find a partner that you can rely on and ask questions if you get stuck. If you miss a class, you're gonna want to get caught back up and you don't want to wait until the next day in class to hopefully run into that one person that sat next to you that one day and introduced themselves. Be proactive. At the beginning of the year, get to know some people or find some people that have already taken the class that you can work with throughout the year. When I went through all of my upper level classes in college, I always had a new partner that I did not know until the start of that class. And we would always study together. We did our homework together. And it was really great to have somebody so I didn't feel alone. Because I think when you start to struggle with math, sometimes that frustration and the stress can feel overwhelming, especially if you have nobody to talk to or really to relate with. So please don't feel like you have to go at this alone. Find a person in a group that you can work with throughout the year. All right, tip number three is I know, Captain Obvious, but it's really important. It's do the work. Now, even though this seems obvious, you wouldn't believe how many students that think they're gonna get an A, but guess what? One of the reasons they don't get that A is they don't simply put in the work. They maybe go through class, they're like, hey, I'm kind of understanding this stuff. And then what do they do? They go back home and they say, oh, I understood what went on in class today, so I'm not gonna do the work. Maybe they'll wait to the very, very end to maybe do the work, to turn it in, or I'm not even gonna do my homework. It's not worth enough, or it's not worth the grade. All this wait till I get a test or a quiz. And guess what? Lo and behold, there's some mistakes or gaps in their knowledge because they didn't do the work. But guess what? Doing the work is really not even enough if you're looking to get an A. When I say do the work, I'm not necessarily just mean do the work that your teacher assigns. I mean, put in the work that is going to give you an A level of knowledge. Sometimes that's gonna mean doing extra work. If you don't understand a concept, just don't accept that you didn't understand it and move on. Do some extra practice problems to overcome that knowledge gap. Some classes are gonna be easier than others, but it's extremely important that your brain is like a muscle and you gotta be able to put in the work if you're hoping to be able to recall that information and the processes that you're learning inside of the classroom. All right, and number four, again, is kind of an obvious one. I get it, but please hear me out on this one. It is to ask questions. Now, if you made it this far, you probably weren't looking for a video of how to not fail your math class. You're trying to look for an A. And so therefore, usually you have some general foundation of math knowledge. You're just trying to look to what do you need to do to get to the tippity top? And I think asking questions can be one of those things that can really help you out. Because the reality is a lot of students don't wanna ask questions because they don't wanna feel vulnerable. They don't wanna feel stupid in front of their classmates or even to their own teacher. But in reality, questions is the way that we understand the information. It not only helps us ourselves understand the material, it also helps our teacher understand where there's some gaps in our learning. So therefore they can either refine or clarify the points that they're making within their instruction. And the biggest thing about asking questions as well is like, if you don't understand something and you don't ask a question, you just kind of like push it aside, say, eh, well, it's not gonna show up on a test. I don't really need to worry about it. If you don't take care of that misunderstanding, it's, it's there, it's not gonna go away. And typically in a class like math, 
that's going to be something that's going to compound. It's going to show up again and again in different contexts throughout the year. So we definitely want to make sure that whenever we have some questions of like, why is this the way it is? or how does it work this way? Make sure you write down those questions and either ask in class, ask your study group, or ask your teacher after school. Tip number five is my favorite study tool. That is to create a cheat sheet. So what exactly is a cheat sheet? Well, a cheat sheet is basically like, yeah, if you could have the sheet of paper right next to you as you took your test, what problems would you write on that cheat sheet? Take a sheet of paper, front and back, eight by 11 and a half, and write down all the information you want to remember for your test. The formulas, the definitions, the example problems, homework examples, anything you can think of. You should be able to fill up a sheet of paper front and back with all this information. Now, the cool thing about doing a cheat sheet, what I found out when I was a student, was actually a great way for me to be able to study for a test. Yes, doing math problems is one way to study, but also your brain needs a way to be able to organize the information and to go through all of the curriculum again to make sure that we can apply it appropriately. So what a cheat sheet does is that kind of forces you to go back through everything that you have done up to that point and to rewrite it down. It helps you retain the information and also decide on what is really important and what is not so important that you need to know for the upcoming test. And if you want a little bonus tip, every single chapter test, do a cheat sheet. Then when you have your semester exam or your final exam, take all of those cheat sheets and do a cheat sheet from all of those cheat sheets. I know it's a lot of cheat sheets, but at the end of the year, when you have a folder of all the cheat sheets of everything you've taught, I mean, that thing might be worth some money. I'm just saying. It's a great study tool. So if you've never done it before, give it a shot. And even though that's a great tip to like not fail your class, I can tell you with certainty, the students that got A's in my class, almost all of them created a cheat sheet. Whereas students that did not get A's, they did not do a cheat sheet. Or if they did do a cheat sheet, it was about as lazy and as quickly as you could do it. So if you're gonna do a cheat sheet, do it right. It should take you to about 60 or 90 minutes to properly create and complete a cheat sheet. All right, now tip number six is kind of related with cheat sheets or we can use cheat sheets to help us do this, but that is going to be to spiral review. Now what spiral review basically is, is just don't go through the curriculum like every chapter and totally forget what you previously did, right? Don't throw your stuff away in the trash can and light it on fire and say, woohoo, I'm done with my chapter. Make sure you keep that stuff and constantly review it. If you have a course where you're gonna have a semester exam or a final exam, you're gonna want that information to review. And it's even better than rather than waiting at the end of the year or the end of the semester to quickly cram and go through the stuff that you hadn't seen in weeks or in months to constantly be reviewing the information. Now, I never did this as a student I didn't even understand what it meant. But once I became a teacher, I noticed the power of the spiral review. It keeps the information fresh in your brain. It also helps you connect previous stuff that you learned to the stuff you are currently learning. So what I did as a teacher is I started enacting every single time we did homework, I would always like sprinkle in a couple of problems from previous chapters and sections. So students could always make sure every homework assignment, they're doing some older problems from stuff that we learned. If you don't have a teacher or a curriculum that is doing that for you, then that's fine. Guess what? You're trying to get an A, do it yourself. Just find one or two problems from previous chapters and complete them. Or maybe go back to a previous test, a previous quiz, a previous homework assignment and redo one of those problems. You don't have to spend an hour doing spiral review. It can be as simple as an extra five to 10 minutes for every single time you're doing math on what you're currently learning. All right, now tip number seven is kind of an odd one, but stay with me here. It is to help others. Now I know we're all pressed for time. And when I say help others, I don't mean privately tutor another student inside your class to help pass it while you're trying to get the A. While that could be helpful for you, that is not exactly what I'm referring to. I'm just referring to helping out students any way you can. That could be students that are inside your class during a class period, right? If you're doing some group work and you have the opportunity to help another student, then do it. If they're asking a question or they just seem confused, reach out to them and see if your explanation can help them get over the hump. And again, this could also be in other classes. If you're in Algebra 2, help somebody out maybe in Algebra 1 or in Geometry, right? Because when you're helping out other students, when you're answering those questions or you're giving them your explanation, that's helping you refine your own understanding of the mathematics. It's helping you make connections that sometimes might not have been there if you didn't have to think about how should I, how could I explain this to somebody else? Every year as a teacher, we I always learn something new about the curriculum. And the reason why is because, yeah, sometimes it was based on what questions students were asking, but a lot of times it was just me making connections as I was refining my explanation. So challenge yourself, challenge your own thinking and understanding on helping explain math concepts, which can be in your class, but maybe even for other classes, help explain math concepts so you get a better understanding and grasp of the information. All right, number eight, learn from your mistakes. Don't we always learn from our mistakes? Well, sometimes we do and sometimes we don't. And it can be tough because I think if there's one thing that's really hard to do is accept the fact that we make mistakes. Of course, there's those times that we make a silly mistake on a test or a quiz and we go and see our friends afterward, we show them and we laugh and we kind of have a little fun with it. 
But also sometimes the stress and the frustration of making a mistake that has a big impact on our grade can be overwhelming. And the last thing we want to do is look at that test or quiz where we got like a D or an F and it was all based on mistakes that you know you could have done better on. But the most important thing to do in a situation like that is not to crumple up the test and throw it away and just kind of forget about it, but you have to be able to face your mistakes head on. You have to be able to look at those problems and try and understand what is it that I got wrong and why did I do it? This is actually something I did when I was a student in university. I used to go to the tutor lab every single day after I had a test or a quiz and I would review all the problems that I got wrong because it's important for me to understand exactly why I made the mistake and what I needed to do to make sure I could do that problem correctly. And guess what? I actually failed my first two quizzes in that class but ended up getting an A throughout the whole year. And I can definitely attribute that growth in my grade due to my ability to be able to face my mistakes and figure out how to correct them. Another thing I used to do is I'd also take the problems that I got wrong. And once the teacher kind of gave us back the answers or we had kind of some solutions, I would actually rework the problems. I would cover up my work and I would take out a blank sheet of paper and I would try to rework the problem again. Sometimes it would take me two or three times to actually be able to get the problem right. But this is really helpful in helping me understand how to do the problem, right? If you've never done the problem right before, what makes you think if you see that problem again, that you're actually gonna be able to get it right? So practice it. If you get it wrong, go through the correction and try to see if you can do it all by yourself. And that is actually something I used to do as well as a teacher. When I would pass back my test to students, I would always say, please stay after school. And if you wanna go through any of, the, any of the problems that you got wrong, like let's go through them. I want you to learn from your mistakes. Some students took me up on that offer, but a lot of didn't. So then what I started to do was actually recording myself going through every single test and quiz. And then I would upload it on YouTube and then students had access to that so they could watch it at night. Again, some students took advantage and some students did not. So then in the last ditch effort, I would give students partial credit for reworking their answers. It wasn't as impactful for students that were just doing it for the credit, but for those students that were really reworking the answers to make sure they understood why they got their mistakes, you could definitely tell those were the students that were gonna get the A because they weren't doing it just for the grade. They were doing it because they wanted to see that they could get the problem correct all on their own. All right, tip number nine is find some time to focus on doing your math. I get it guys, you have a life too. You have to be able to structure your time. But if there's one thing that I think is consistent about math is you gotta be consistent with doing the work. You can't just expect to cram in your homework and studying the night before the test and expect to always do your best to get that A. You have to set aside some time each and every day to be doing some math. And trust me, as a student, I played three sports all throughout high school. So I was busy every day after school. It was very difficult for me to be able to find time to focus on doing math. Now, I wasn't the best student when I was in high school, so we're not gonna talk about my time management for math during that time. But I will say in college, one of the things that I started to do once I wanted to be successful in math is I did. I went to the tutor lab every single day. If I was struggling or not, I would go to that tutor lab to spend an hour. That was my way of keeping myself honest with doing my math work. I had to make sure I was spending a certain amount of time on my math work each and every day. I did this for the first couple of years I was in college, as well as after that, I became a tutor. And guess what? I spent even more time in the tutor lab and I'd utilize a lot of that extra time I was there to continue working on my studies. So sometimes you're gonna have a home office. Sometimes you're gonna to want to go to a library or a coffee shop, or you're gonna be meeting at a friend's house or staying after school or before school. Whatever it is, create a schedule and stick with it. Because I'm telling you, if you can be consistent with doing your work, even when you're not struggling, that's gonna help propel you to getting that A. All right guys, last but not least is tip number 10, which is pretty simple, but probably the biggest tip I can give you. And that is simply to believe. And no, I'm not talking about going home and singing Kumbaya. I'm talking about believing yourself, believing your abilities to get that A. You can do it because if you made it this far in this video, there's something special about you. There's something inside that is going to help you reach your goals of getting an A. Now we talked about, you gotta put in the work, right? You just can't believe and not follow all the first tips. There's a reason why this is last because this is really the final piece that I think is gonna put everything together. If you follow those nine tips and you really put a big emphasis and believing that you're gonna get that A, everything is gonna conspire to get you to get that A. I'm seen it time and time again as a teacher. You can tell the difference of the students that they believe they can get an A and those that are there just hoping that an A somehow shows up at the end of the year. I see it when students write down their goals. They say, I want an A. And then they get back that first test or first quiz and they get a B, a C, a D. And you can see they get deflated and they start to realize that this is gonna be some work that they're gonna have to do. They don't give up. They don't try to drop out of the class, but you see them showing up after school. You see them with a positive attitude, ready for more. Because earning an A is a journey and it's something that you need to do consistently day in and day out. And it's not always easy. There are a lot of times it's tough where you don't wanna do your work. You don't wanna pay attention. You don't wanna go to class. You don't do as well as you expected. You make mental mistakes. But if you can hold true to your belief that you have the ability to 
to do it. That is something that is gonna fuel you throughout the rest of the year. So if you're ready to get that A, write down, I will get an A this year. And write down what tips from this list that you can apply to your own setting. And I'm telling you, there's nothing that's gonna make me happier as a teacher. As you commenting now, and then you replying to that comment at the end of the year, letting me know that by your actions, by your beliefs, and by following any one of collection of these tips, you got the A that you and I know you can get. I wish you the best of luck, ladies and gentlemen. Get that A.